Hello, my name is Triad R. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Arc de Triomphe in Minecraft. Let's get started. Alright, I think no introduction is needed for this particular building. It is, of course, the Arc de Triomphe, located in Paris, France. Originally built to commemorate the, the, the many victories of Napoleon, begun in the early 1800s, not finished until the 1830s, because, you know, after, after Napoleon lost power, they, they kind of stopped building it. I mean, you can understand that. But because having half of an arch wasn't very triumphal, they did finish it, and it, generally speaking, commemorates the, the general victorious nature of France. At least, you know, in, in, in more historical times, the, the, the French were always a big power, ultimately culminating with the reign of Napoleon Bonaparte. So, uh, that's the history behind this. Of course, what you see is what you get with the Arc de Triomphe here. A uh, fun fact, kind of. I have uh, designed this to be uh, actually to scale with the Arc de Triomphe itself. Ours is going to be just a couple of blocks taller, of course, but otherwise it's pretty much the same size, actually. So I tried my best to replicate all of the details. We do have the, the coffers underneath the arch here. As far as arches go, it's a pretty simple design, actually, other than being really, really big. Other smaller Roman arches would have been a little bit more ornate with, you know, more, more pilasters and, and unnecessary detail everywhere. But in keeping with the Baroque architecture of the time, it's a bit more simplified and elegant. Just what you would expect, of course, from, from something built in France. So, with all that said, uh, there isn't actually anything on the top of the Arc de Triomphe, as you might expect. There is a place for something. Actually, this is where a big equestrian statue of Napoleon, I think probably with the, with the four horses riding the chariot, was supposed to be up here. But after he was deposed and the arch wasn't finished for a while, that obviously didn't happen, so, so they never put that up here. I think they did make the parts, though. They are probably in a museum somewhere. I'm saying that because if you want to put something up here, you can. You can put, perhaps, up here, if you've seen my last Noriath episode, you can put up here my Roman equestrian statue with some soldiers on either side. Or conversely, you can actually use the, the, the medium-sized uh, hoplite, the, like the half-sized colossus, to sit on top of this as well. It'll just fit, if you want to. I will leave it up to you to decide exactly what you want to put on top of your Arc de Triomphe, if you want to put anything up there at all. And with that said, we will go ahead and begin the tutorial. We got quite a lot to get through today, 50-something phases. So let's go ahead and get started. I should also mention, of course, this is available in the video description for download for both Java and Bedrock versions. So if the video isn't enough, if you really just want to, to take the building, you can do that. And let's go ahead and lay out the foundation. Of course, as you might expect, the foundation is just a big rectangle. And there are a bunch of filler blocks in behind this here. This is my standard filler block. It's because it's easy to count. Uh, but you don't need to place those. They're just extra if you want to make it solid. That'll be included in the bill of materials that you would have seen when we first started. The, there's the first couple of slides in the video. It's got the uh, dimensions, by the way, at the top of that. Uh, let's go ahead, though, and start here and count for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12... Boy, we got a lot of counting to do. 12, 15, 16, 18, 21, 22, 24, 27, 29, 30, 31, 33, 36, 39, uh, what, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49 blocks. All right, so the base is straight across 49 blocks. And then we want to count back. Let's, um, we're going to count this block here twice, by the way, so don't, don't get the throne on that. By 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 25, 27, 29, 30, 33. All right. So, with your cobbled deep slate, make a big rectangle of those dimensions. And you don't have to fill it in with anything, because we're just putting stuff right on top of it. Uh, so, for this one, easy. What you want to do is cut back one block 
all the way around and put another rectangle right on right on top of that one right on top and behind that we then need to lay down the four piers for the arch I'm just going to refer to it as an arch instead of an arc I suppose I probably should refer to it as an arc I don't I think I think that just means arch arch in French and uh, we're not doing the, the tutorial in French so my French is way too rusty for that um so uh let's see let's count from this block here and diagonal for that many blocks there and then you want to place down what four and then three and then one two three four five six seven then one two one two three four one one two three four five six one one two no that'll be three and three again, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so even though those are filler blocks, you can, uh, just to, so you have something to build on, you can put down some cobble underneath those torches there according to those dimensions. And then you want to make that three more times according to this pattern here. So the easiest way for you to calculate that is to take what you've done here and then you can just draw your, your three block diagonal in every corner. Right there and this one back over here to help you properly line that up. Because you know that this phase is um, literally foundational so you want to make sure that you count all of this stuff three times and oops there we go and the space between here is going to be well, one two three four five six seven and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven all right so now if we take our a building and we divide it in twain just straight down the middle it's going to be somewhere around here, let me, let me make sure I get that right. Yeah. So somewhere around here, if we take a, a red line and draw it right through the middle of the building, what we're gonna be building on the right side is the mirror image of what we're gonna be building on the left side. So as we go, we're going to be looking at half of the building, and that's because you can just look at either the video again or look at what you've already built and just build it again, but, you know, mirrored on this side of the center line. In other words, you build something like this right there, you want to build something like that right there, okay? Uh, and we could actually divide the building in quadrants if we wanted to as well. Um... If I can place the carpet without constantly placing it on top of itself. You know, you'd think after all these years I wouldn't do that, but it still happens all the time. Uh, so this block right here where that torch is, that's going to be the very center point of our arch, just like so. And if we wanted to, and turn this way and extend a red line through the building just like that, technically we're... Um, uh, one quarter of this building is just going to be rotated 90 degrees each time, just, just around that uh, that center point right there, and that will give us the entire arch. But for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm not going to do that. It, that. That's how I built it. But for the purpose of the tutorial, we're going to take a look at half of the building. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's start over here at the edge again. Count over three where our markers are. So you can see where I placed down those torches previously. I suppose I should have done that on this phase. Uh, where we did that numbering, that is where you want to place right on top of those your cobbled deep slate. Just right here. I'll just place some torches on top of it again before we move on. 
The lower levels of this are pretty simple. They're just all straight cobbled deep slate. As we get higher up, though, things become more ornate. That's generally the rules. You want to have the, the, the simple stuff on the bottom, and as you go towards the top, things get more encrusted with detail. You, you, you can see that here, right? You can apply that principle to not just this building, but uh, lo lots of other buildings. It's one of those uh, good Roman building principles that uh, people don't realize. Uh, so... Uh, anyway, once you place uh, one of these four uh, four piers, you want to, as I said, rotate them and place your other four piers just like so. All right, and then after that, we want to come back around for this phase here, and we're now uh, using tough blocks. These are set uh, one block back from the edges here. So that should be, you know, that should be a pretty easy thing to follow. Set, set it one block back from the edges and just use full blocks of tough. Except on the inside there. All right. So, of course, you want to do this other pier the exact same way. And then the other two piers the exact same way. All right, next phase starting here. Uh, we are doing a bit of a tough and andesite, actually, for this one. I decided andesite. We're, we're just about out of the range, but we, it, it was the right level of smoothness, I thought, for uh, the, the arc. All right, so here I will leave you to place down the patterns. We're just going to take a look at it as we do. That's why I saw it's a, all the blocks are pre-placed into slices for that reason. I think it's a lot easier. For you to see what's already been placed, and me just take a slow look at it, rather than trying to, to place it right in front of you. Sometimes I will do that, but, 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 but not always. This building is just slightly too big for that approach, so we have to slice it up. Alright, so once you place one of those, of course you want to place another one, just like it over here, and then two more over there. All right, starting here again, you are taking exactly what you did and extending it straight up. I think these next few phases are going to be pretty easy, actually, because that's what we're going to be doing for those. But let's not go too fast. All right, so once you do one of those, just, just flip it and build one again. And build two more over here. All right, next phase, take the uh, the next part of the pier and extend it straight up again. And I think uh, we don't have to look at that because you're, they are just going straight up. That goes up for one, two, okay, let's, let's flip over to this, this phase. So that extends straight up for one, two, three, four blocked levels. So go ahead and extend all of that straight up according to the patterns that we've already laid down. Then on top of that, you want to go down and cap the whole thing off with tough, like we did down here for the first one, you want to do that again up here for this one. Just like so. And once you've done that for one pier, you want to do it for the mirror image pier over here and for the other two piers down there. All right, next phase, really easy. We don't have to really look at this one much. You're taking, just put down a layer of diorite right on top of all that tough. Just like so. And for the second, third, and fourth pier, do the same. Just a big layer of diorite right on top. All right, uh, next phase here, we are putting on a sort of a lower string cornice. Of upside down uh, uh, polished andesite stairs, I think is what these are. So you can see here, uh, just on top of your um, diorite, you can put down a, a layer of uh, andesite if you want to, or cobblestone, or any material. And in front of that, you want to put down the upside down stairs right here. 
just like so. And then that stops just right there. It's only on the lowermost levels on the, the, uh, the outside edges. And then instead of that, you want to uh, tr uh, go back to a layer of tough. On the inside right there. And of course, you want to flip that around and build one here. And then flip and rotate it to build the other two down there just the same. All right, next phase, we got a block of tough right here, and then some andesite. And then here, uh, don't don't let these throw you. These th these are filler blocks here, but these these are just uh, your standard uh, smooth stone half slab is what these are. Even though I changed the texture of them, um, because these are just uh, these these are seamless double half slabs. But we actually want to use the half slab here. Uh, if you want to, you can use polished andesite half slabs. I suppose I probably should have. Probably should have used those for that, uh, but 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 uh, e either way, you can use whatever type of hash lab you want, as long as it's got a decent pattern on it. And then behind that, you want to put a bit of diorite, just like so. And then some andesite again, and then some tuff. Right there, uh, more andesite and tuff. Andesite and tuff, and andesite and tuff. Bit of diorite on the inside, and even more andesite and tough. Going all the way around back here. Alright, so once you've done that, you know the drill. You want to build piers 2, 3, and 4 the same, just rotating it each time that you do it. Alright, next phase here, we want to do more tough and andesite, of course. But then uh, here we want to have tough on top of the diorite that we put down last time. And then back to more combinations of tough and andesite. I think these two blocks go well together. I mean, a lot of things go well with tough, actually. Cobblestone, smooth stone, but for this one it's andesite. And then in here, behind our, um, we want to have a bit of cobbled deep slate. Because that is going to be behind our, um, our, how shall I say, it's, it's sort of like so, some inset sculptural panels um, that are in, in these sections here. So, as you see, we have like one half slab and two stairs. I know it, uh, you know, it doesn't look like much yet, but we're, we're way out of range to go take a look at it. But it's, it's going to be an inset uh, sculptural panel. Well, you know... Minecraft. We can only make these as as sculptural as we as we can. So it's it's one of those things that if you if you stand far back from it and kind of look sideways at it, you you can you can kind of see a sculptural panel in that. I mean, it's like uh, these the sculptures that we're going to be building on top of this. I didn't I didn't try to do too much um, half slab and stair work on that. In fact, we didn't use any on that. Uh, because it, it's one of those things that after you get past a certain size, you may as well just use the full blocks for your sculptures. That's what I do anyway. Uh, so here we want to start next phase. Of course, after you do the other other three piers, you know, just the same. Let's go back and take a look at it before we get away. You can see you're just rotating and mirroring those as you go. All right, anyway, uh, next phase here, uh, more tough and andesite. And uh, here is the random assemblage of diorite. Just place it down like this. It, it'll look good from a distance. One of those things, you know, sculptures in Minecraft, don't look too closely at it. And then around back here, and then here we have uh, some more stairs and uh, andesite in there for that for our sculptural panel. Alright, so once you do one of those, of course, you want to just rotate the pattern. Well, in this case, you want to mirror it. It's like so. And then let's take a top-down view. So you can see how all that works. And we will go on to the next phase.
Uh, so over here we've got a block of tough, just like so. And then more andesite, and then a bit of diorite, of course, here for our sculptures around front. Mm -hmm. Let's pan around that, take a look at the other detailing. As I said, things get more ornate as we get higher up. Uh, so we're finished with our very small sculptural panel there, very small, it's only six blocks. Uh, we just want to cap that off with some diorite like so. For all the panels on all four of the piers. And then you know the drill, you want to flip and rotate and do all of that. For the other four, for, for, um, for all four, but for the other three piers. Uh, so here, going up again, start over here with that block of tough. So we, I'm kind of trying to start at the same point as we go up to make things consistent. And then other than the dial right at the front, everything else is going to be tough and andesite. Alright, and then you know the drill, do the same for all the other piers, and we will go on to the next phase. Alright, tough and andesite and dial right again. Like so. And then here we've got another upside down cornice of polished andesite stairs. Like that there, just on the inside now. And uh, ne never mind those blocks of uh, Cobble Deeps Lake right there. Actually, I think, actually, I think we do want to put those in. This is going to be um, for our, our coffered arch. For the two small coffered arches we're going to be building. So I think that's the lowest most portion of those, if memory serves. All right, let's go on to the next phase here. And take a look at our random assemblage of diorites right here. If you want to, you can try and re-sculpt these with some stairs and half slabs and try and make, get, tease a little bit more detail out of those. But like I said, you know, sculptures in Minecraft, is at some point you're putting too much work into it for what you're going to get out of it. All right, so here you do want to place the, the cobbled deep slate and the dial right, just like is shown. And then do the same for the other piers. And we will go on to the next phase. All right, this is just a tough diorite and andesite. Nothing too complicated. Pretty simple, actually. So you want to do the same, just flipping and rotating and mirroring for the other three piers. And let's go on to the next phase. All right, you do want to place the dial right in the cobble deep slate, just like is shown. And then, of course, the same for your other piers. And we will move on to the next phase. Not going to be just, a, it's a few more phases, and all these arches are going to, going to connect, and then we're going to be taking a look at uh, more larger larger sections all at once instead of this, uh, this one-quarter approach. 
Alright, so the andesite and the diorite and the tuff, just like is shown. Uh, we do have a, a, a half slab here, though. Uh, that is because there are some... I'm not sure. It's, it, it's sort of like there, there are some... Uh, it's, it's like this little inset panel, the sculptural panel that we did down here. But they're in the pendentives of the arches. The triangular sections of those. So I tried to replicate that as best I could, you know. Minecraft, that usually boils down to a stair or a half slab, really. Just like so with the dial right here. We have the first portions of our uh, first arch of our, of our arc leaning inward, just like so. And uh, note, note the half slab here. And of course, once you do that, you want to do the second, third, and fourth pier just the same. All right. Uh, pretty simple across the front here. Just straight run of andesite with the tuff on the corners. Uh, detailing here for the sculptural pendentive. Although it's not actually a, a, a pendentive, I'm just... That's the intersection of three arches, really, but I'm just calling it that. There's probably a term for it. I'm sure there is, but I, I, I neglected to, to look that up, actually. So many architectural terms, can't remember them all. Detailing here, staring half slab. And we're back to our torch, so you know what that means. You want to do all the other arches just the same. We can kind of see it leaning inwards now. We've built quite a bit so far. About, um, oh, I don't know, half? Half, maybe? Uh, so, next phase here, pretty simple across the front. Tough and andesite, just like is shown. couple more stairs and half slabs. Just one stair, two half slabs. And then we're connecting our arches. Just like so. With that one, two, three, four, five blocks of die right there, and then tough, and then die right behind that. I mean, what? well, you know, Minecraft. This is, you know, th th this is as good of an arch as we can get on this scale. Detailing back down here in the coffered section. Uh, because uh, in between these two arches, we do have a little barrel vault. And, of course, we are doing that with, uh, with coffered detail. And all that means is, instead of just having this be a straight run of blocks, we're knocking out every other block in sort of a checkerboard pattern. Well, not, not quite checkerboard. Spaced checkerboard pattern to simulate the coffers. And in order to make the coffers more visible behind those, instead of having those just be all diorite, I've outlined them a, a bit more with uh, cobbled deep slate, just like as shown here. Oh, and uh, we've got the same sort of de detailing back here for that, for our, our arched pendentive. I'm sure that's the wrong term, but we're just going to roll with it. All right, so now we should have uh, 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 the piers on the left and the right connected to each other by those arches. All right, uh, next phase here. Let's actually... We're connecting things together even more, but let's go ahead and start here because we've just got a lot of tough to lay down. You could say that it, it, it's a really tough phase. I know, ter terrible joke, terrible joke. Please don't unsubscribe. All right, so now that we're going to scan around the entire uh, section of this arch until it all starts joining together. But, you know, this is really easy. We're just laying down straight rounds of tough. And then behind that, like I said, with the, the barrel vaulted coffered detail, we are doing that here. Let's take a look from below what that looks like here. And then let's come back up here and take a look at that from above. Just like so. Just like so.
All right, and of course mirror that on the other side there. And the next phase is going to be really simple. On top of all of that tough you laid down, we're doing the diorite. We did the tough phase last time, and now we're doing an easy phase. I know, I know, terrible, ter terrible jokes, terrible jokes. Well, of course, you come here for uh, for the building, not for the jokes. So, you, uh, on top of all the the coffered barrel vault, you just want to fill that in with that uh, was that nine blocks of cobbled deep slate, just like is shown there to finish that off. And then this entire section is going to be finished. Pretty, if I do say so myself. I haven't included it, but uh, uh, back in these little coffers, this would actually be a good place if you want to hide some lighting. Throw some torches back down in, in, in these little these little recesses here. And then you're going to have to put something up here. Maybe maybe two torches there to help light up your, your vault at night anyway. You can still see those two torches, but the other three we put down, you can't, you can't see those at all. All right, then of course do the other pier exactly the same. And then the next phase, I think what you want to do is you want to go around on top of this diorite and put down whatever block you want. It can be this andesite here. It can be cobblestone. It could even be dirt. Uh, but in front of that, we want to put the upside down cornice of the polished andesite stairs. Just like so, following the contours of the just turning as you go, except for this, this block here. This is, this, is a, this is a little awkward section, but you know, just, just make it like that and keep going. Make the other corner like that too. And then just a straight run around here. Turn the corner and a straight run along the side. No, oh, forgot the torch. And then behind that, that can be whatever filler block you want to. You can build this thing hollow if you want to, or just fill it in with cobblestone or whatever other uh, block you have handy. If you want to make it solid, remember if you are leaving it hollow, you want to put down generous torches so you don't end up with a with a French mob farm. I'm not sure what, what French mobs look like. Well, it wouldn't, ne ne never mind that. Let's not get sidetracked. Let's uh, keep going. You want to put down a box tough and then lay down the andesite just like so. Just right behind our upside down stairs, pretty much. Then follow the pattern here. And now we're actually building the lowermost portions of the arches, the, 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 the main arch right here and the, the, uh, the coffered barrel vault on the inside right here. All right, uh, of course, build both the same. Next phase here, start with, you know, tough andesite and diorite. I hardly need say. So let's just take a look at it, and you can uh, get on with building it. Straight burn a cobbled deep slate. And uh, that's all there is to that. Let's go on to the next phase where, of course, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got now, uh, remember that sculptural panel I talked about way down there? Well, we got, we've got big ones now on the exterior facade of the building. So you want to, to build the stairs and the half slabs just like you see done here. I'll zoom in on those real close as we go by them. Uh, except here at the back, because this panel here is just an inverse of the one you did at the front. You know, mirror image and everything. Uh, and then along the side here, here is the, the 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 random stairs and half slabs for this sculptural panel. They are actually random, by the way. I didn't 
I didn't try and look at the sculpture and, and try to replicate it too much because, you know, Minecraft. It, uh, it, it, it's, 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 there's not a whole lot of point in trying to, to do that at this scale with just a couple of blocks because you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize what it was anyway. Uh, so, next base here, block of tough, and uh, the sculptural panels again. You want to start leaning out the dial right here, because, you know, we're forming now our large arch in our arc, just like so. And, of course, here we have our uh, large coffered barrel vault so that means instead of a one by one we're doing uh three by three coffers in this one all right now the sculptural uh, inset panel along the side here And uh, we can go on to the next phase. Of course, you want to place a uh, couple deep slate behind all these sculptural panels. By the way, in case that wasn't clear. We want to have the background be a higher contrast to the um, foreground. Uh, so let's start here where we've been, been starting this whole time and take a look at the next section. And assemblage blocks here for the, the front-facing sculptural panels. Lean out the dial right for the arch right here. And the detailing along here for the side sculptural panel. I didn't actually look too closely at what the panels represent. I assume it's uh, probably uh, some, probably a series of famous French victories. Carved out, I assume. I mean, it's a triumphal arch, of course. That's the usual thing you put on those. I don't know if they would be Napoleon's victories or not. I mean, some of them probably are. Uh, but seeing as how these these would have been finished much later, I'm not I'm not really sure. All right, uh, next set of uh, blocks for the sculptural panels. Now uh, we have uh, more uh, uh, sculptural pendentives here at the front. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder if you would actually call that a sculptural tympanum or a sculptural tympanum. I'm not, I'm not real sure. I bet that's what that's called, if I had to guess. I mean, it doesn't really matter. All you have to do is uh, just, just put an upside-down stair in it, and we can forget about what it's called and, and keep moving. Uh, detailing for the side sculptural panels. Like so. And there's a torch. So we will go on to the next phase. Uh, and uh, we're actually finished with those panels. You can see we are just capping them off with straight runs of diorite to uh, complete the frame that it's sitting in. Uh, detailing here, though, for our uh, the the main arch, like so. And then along the side here, just straight run of diorite to cap the entire thing off. All right, next phase: block of tough on the corners, and then straight runs of andesite.
on top of that. And then just some uh, a small detailing here for the uh, the sculptural, whatever it's called. And uh, here we actually have uh, we have a keystone. The the arch is big enough. We can we can have a three dimensional keystone. So on the top of that we have uh, uh, just a block of dial right here, and then two upside down stairs, just like so. Let's take a look at all this from below first. So like that, and you can see we're connecting our arch right there in the middle. The two halves are now connected. Let's take a look at that from above now. Just like so, right there. And then of course the back is the same as the front. And then right along the side here, just a straight run of andesite. Right there. Let's go on to the next phase. So as you might expect, we have just straight runs of tuff now on top of all that andesite, except for here in the middle for the sculptural detailing around the edges of the arch. Just like so. Finish off our keystone with some more upside down stairs and another block of diorite. Uh, cap off the coffers. Right there, according to that pattern, let's take a look at it from below, just like so. Looking pretty good. Coffers are always satisfying on a large scale. And then back here, same detailing across the back that you did along the front. And then, of course, along the side, just a straight run of tough. All right, so this is going to be just about the easiest phase since we started. You want to do a big rectangle of diorite right on top of all of that tuff. Except here at your keystone, we want to put down three half slabs. You can use a smooth, whatever half slab type you use down there. For that, you want to put down three up here, one on top of each keystone. Uh, and then to finish off your coffering, down here, of course, you want to put in three blocks of andesite. Right there. And then uh, somewhere up here, I would, you might want to hide some, hide some torches. You know, just, just throw down a couple of torches here and there. Uh, I generally like to put one... Right along there, maybe one around there. Just like so. So whenever you're looking at it at night, you, you can have the interior of this lit up. It, it, it'll look quite nice, I think. All right, uh, next phase, right on top of that diorite, put whatever filler block you want to. It can be andesite, it, can, it could even be dirt. It could be diamonds. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, nobody's using diamonds for filler blocks. Uh, so in front of that, you want to put down just a big rectangle upside down, polished andesite stairs right on top of that tuff. I mean, right on top of the diorite that's on top of the tuff. See, just a big rectangle upside down stairs all the way around the building. And then just fill, fill all of it in behind that with whatever filler block you want to. All right, now behind your stairs, uh, here you want to go back one block on all four sides and do straight run of diorite in a big rectangle, just like that there. All right, next phase, you want to do the, the exact same thing again, but extend this up for total of high, a, a height of two blocks and then starting at the corner every other block you want to put in a cobblestone half slab just like that here all the way across in a big rectangle every other block a cobblestone half slab alright and then next phase 
This is this is the Corinthian entablature, by the way. Um, so every other block we want to put down. Let's actually take a look at it from above. Well, uh, so on top of every, um, how's the best way to explain this? Is that a filler block? Yeah. Okay, so on top of all these half slabs back here, just put whatever filler block you want to. It can be anything. And then on the front of those, on the front of what are the filler blocks you put down, you want to put down a upside down cobblestone stair facing outwards. So you want to make sure you turn the corners there. And then in between those filler blocks, you want to place down, like where the torches are here, in between these filler blocks, you want to place down a chiseled stone brick uh, full block, just like so. And then in front of the chiseled stone brick full blocks, you want to place down a, um, a cobblestone wall. Although, actually, I, you might want to upgrade this to, uh, I think, an andesite wall would look here better, now that, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So I would recommend that as an upgrade. Uh, instead of these cobblestone walls, uh, n yeah, that's right, those are, those are the wall blocks, right? Uh, you want to put down uh, andesite walls instead. That, that'll, that'll have a higher contrast to the cobblestone. So that's a repeating pattern, just like so. You want to repeat that according to the half slabs you already laid down here. Then you want to turn the corner and repeat the pattern. Turn the corner here, repeat the pattern until you make just one big rectangle out of that entire thing. All right, next phase. Uh, so on top of all of this back here, if you want to, you can lay down full blocks of polished andesite. And then in front of those full blocks of polished andesite right here, you want to put down a cornice of upside down polished andesite stairs, just like we did back down here. We're doing another one of those. And like you can see here, we're making a big rectangle out of that entire pattern all the way around the arc. All right, uh, next phase here, e even more detail. Remember, remember what I told you about the detail down there? It starts off simple, but then it gets complicated. We get towards the top. Uh, so uh, half slabs up here again. You can use uh, whatever half slab you've been using down there for the sculptural uh, pediment. Uh, well, no, it's a sculptural podium and up there for the keystone and whatever half slab you used. Uh, you want to use that again and then stack them up here to get a double half slab of this. I, I know this looks exactly the same as the filter blocks, but uh, these visible blocks out here, where I have, um, where we have the red carpet on top of that, you actually need to place these. Th th those aren't filler blocks. All right, so here's the, the, the pretty simple pattern for that. Just, just follow that out. Behind that, you want to place a big rectangle of cobbled deep slate, just like so. And if we go back down here, there is a small variant back down here. It's because we only have full blocks to play with, but the, the, the pattern itself uh, was uh, is uh, is four blocks in total really before it, before it starts repeating so we had to kind of uh, we had to kind of wedge in this extra block here so we can make the corner look right from the side. It's one of those things. Sometimes you have to make compromises in Minecraft, especially when you're making a an actual building. You can't always fit in all of the detail. You have to you have to to to, to stretch and sometimes squish things together to make it look good enough, anyway, in terms of blocks. All right, uh, next phase over here. Let's start, uh, well, I'll place down a torch here, but we're really on this block level. We're placing down a bunch of cobbled deep slate and uh, polished andesite stairs according to this pattern here. So this this will make more sense after we build more of it, but it's just a repeating pattern. I think, um, I think on the Arc de Triomphe, these are actually supposed to be roundels. Uh, I think they might actually be sculptured roundels, too. But, but anyway, you know, Minecraft. We've only got blocks, so we have to approximate these as best we can with what we've got. 
It looks good enough from a distance, I think. Okay, turn the corner, build pattern. Just like so. We're going to just scan through the entire sequence here. Even though it is a repeating pattern, we're just going to slow down a bit. It's one right after the other. The, the, uh, the pattern's good across the front. It's only when we get to this corner here that we had to squish. All right, let's go on to the next phase here. And now we're extending up our pattern with uh, mostly tough. Like you can see, we're doing a, a, a one to three ratio of tough blocks, putting those down right there. But let's, uh, let's scan over the entire sequence of it just to make sure. We're up at the complicated parts, so we don't want to go too quick. Let's see. We are actually pretty near the top. We're gonna we're gonna fit all this into one episode. I think it's gonna be a bit over an hour, as far as I can tell. But we are gonna get it all into one, uh, which is pretty good because of how big it is. But there's a lot of repeating detail, so that helped. Uh, all right. Uh, next phase here: uh, detailing with a bit of tough. Uh, Cobbled deep slate and polished andesite stairs. And uh, make sure you get this little corner here. That's the only not not non-repeating part. The rest of it is um, just all standard. All right, that was the whole sequence. Uh, next phase here. Uh, tough, diorite, and cobbled deep slate. I think I can, I can probably zoom out a little on this. It's so... We built enough of that. I think you can see it at a glance. Without zooming in on it too much. All right, let's go on to the next phase. I think I can see the end in sight down there. All right, so next phase, pretty much the same deal, except you're reversing the positions of the andesite. No, there's no andesite in this. You're reversing the positions of the tuff and the diorite uh, on top of the, the, the uh, diorite and the cobble deep slate, just like so. All right, next phase here, we're going back to what we did previously to finish off the, the section of these inset roundels. Well, you know, Minecraft, it's, if, if we want a roundel, all we've really got is four blocks. That's as round as it gets in uh, this sort of scale.
All right, just going to scoot on by that. Then you can see here, just doing the same patterns along the side, except for these little squished edges. Same pattern along the back. And then along the side there, just the same as the other one. All right, here, uh, next phase, uh, we are flipping some stairs upside down, just like so. Like that here, so we'll just look at that from the top, everywhere you see this, it's an upside down stair. And then there's just a tough and uh, a bit of an andesite behind that. All right, just like so. Same deal, repeating pattern, just like that there, and I don't think I need to fly all the way around it. Uh, next phase here, though, easy, easy phase. On top of all of that, we are putting down a big rectangle of tough. Although, I mean, I said it was an easy phase, it, it's really a tough phase. Very, very tough. All right, then there is some, um, I think those are just random andesite filler blocks behind that. But anyway, uh, so on top of that, you want to put go and put down, this is actually an easy phase now, a big rectangle of diorite on top of all of that tuff. All right, and of course the outer edges of the tuff just sits right on top of those uh, upside down stairs. All right, now we are putting on an upside down cornice. So you can put down, I uh, think it's going to be an andesite block. And then in front of those, you want to put down a big rectangle of upside down andesite stairs and a big rectangle all the way around the building. And behind that, we're actually building the lowermost portions of this little ambulatory we're going to have up here for the roof, a little uh, pathway to walk on. So uh, that's just uh, uh, one block of, of cobbled deep slate, two blocks of andesite, and another block of cobbled deep slate. Just like so, right there. Big rectangle. And then we're going to be building what's going to be the, the, the uh, podium at the top that would have our uh, big equestrian or chariot statue of Napoleon. Um, of course, we don't have one of those. Uh, but we do want to put in uh, this uh, this outer edge, this little, uh, um, it's kind of like a, a sculptured parapet, really, that we're going to be adding to uh, the top of the arc. Although I think there, there actually isn't one of these on top of the Arc de Triomphe, actually. Uh, it, it's just a decoration I put on top of it. Because if they were following all the other Baroque and Roman patterns, there should have been one on top of it. But uh, I think by the time they built that, that's, I was, I don't know if they'd still, I mean, the original architect died, so they didn't, they might not have had the plan. But that, that should be up there, just like all the other arches, if I had to guess. But, you know, they didn't put the statue of Napoleon up here either, so I'm assuming they cheaped out on this part too. Uh, so here, I mean, they, they could have stripped it off, though, according to the rest of the design. Like I said, the Arc de Triomphe is it's a more simplified Roman arch design, so they might have decided to dispense with these details. Uh, but I think it looks good, so I added it. It's the only real change I made to the building, really. Uh, so anyway, up here, we want to put down uh, the, the cobbled deep slate and the diorite, according to this pattern here. Just like so. Every other block except for the corners. Just like that there. And back there, and I'll just get a little altitude so you can see the whole thing at a glance. And then behind that, you want to step back one block back here and put a big rectangle of cobbled deep slate right there in the middle for your uh, sculptural podium. All right, so uh, uh, every block of diorite that you put down in the previous phase extended up by one block. Just like so, in, in a big uh, uh, saw pattern, like that there. Alright, and we're now to the penultimate phase. So on the corners here, we want to have the diorite blocks hanging over, and then in the middle of every, every other, other block, we want to put a block of diorite, just like is shown here, to finish off our little decorative uh, parapet on the top. 
I always put this on my Roman buildings in Minecraft. So that's the real reason I added it. Because it just kind of... I was looking at it and I thought, well... It needs it needs just a little bit of more decorative flourish on top of all of these... Um, these uh, ever more increasingly uh, complex entablature designs. So that's what I went with. But if you want a, a Arc de Triomphe that is just a little bit more faithful to the original, you can dispense with this diorite detailing and instead just make a big rectangle of cobbled deep slate uh, two blocks thick on the top instead. If, if you want something that's a little bit more uh, real world accurate. Like I said, this is the only real change I made to the building. Just here at the top. Alright, uh, uh, wait a minute. I forgot this last phase here. Uh, so on top of the, the cobbled deep slate, put down a big rectangle of tuff. And then on top of the rectangle of tuff, you want to put down this pattern of a two block wide frame of cobbled deep slate, then one block rectangle of diorite, then inset inside of that a one block cobbled deep slate, and then fill in the rest of it solid with just a big slab of diorite. Uh, and then right up here on top of this, uh, this is going to be wherever if you want to have something on top of your Arc de Triomphe. If you want to try and, you know, make your own statue of Napoleon, you can put it up here. Or use uh, one of my um, uh, one of my hoplite statues. It's just, it's too, the Colossus is too big to put up here, but you can put the other sizes up here, the other two. If you so choose, or put my uh, Roman Equestrian statue up here, or perhaps even the Pegasus statue, or the large Roman Eagle statue. Any of my other statues that'll fit on top of here, you can you can throw down there. Uh, and uh, the last phase here, very easy. So here at these corners, we want to put right here, right there. Uh, on top of all these corners, we want to put one, two, three, four blocks of diorite, just like so for those corners for the final decorative flourish on the 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 the, uh, the, the finials at the top. And once you have done that, your Arc de Triomphe will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the Arc de Triomphe tutorial, and I would like to say uh, merci beaucoup, and I will see you next time.